Confidential information is really important to all businesses, whether negotiating complex research and development arrangements or simply exploring the prospect of a future merger. Losing that confidential information so it enters the public domain can have a huge impact. In this session, Kate Swain is going to discuss what do we mean by confidential information and how you can protect it. Kate, what falls into the definition of confidentiality? Technically anything. So it's all going to depend upon the company itself. Uh, what business is it in? What sector does it work in? How does it conduct its business? In the kind of information it's actually going to attach to, commonly we see joint venture agreements, uh, research and development, licensing. But essentially, confidentiality can be anything. It all depends upon what you decide to designate as confidential. And so how do you do that? Well, it's all about how you treat it. And I think that's the thing that people often forget with confidential information. You can label something as confidential as much as you want, but ultimately it's how you treat that information. It's what you do with it that reinforces its confidential nature. So what's the point of a confidentiality agreement then? Well, what the confidentiality agreement does is, first of all, it gives you a framework. It means that you actually think about what information you're going to render confidential. Why is it confidential? Who's going to be able to view that information? How long is the agreement going to be in place? It gives you a structure and you need that structure in order to be able to defend the confidentiality of the information if it's later challenged. What are the key differences between an NDA and a confidentiality agreement? Fundamentally nothing they're achieving pretty much the same thing. The difference between any of these agreements are the specific provisions that you put in place. So how you define the information, who you disclose it to, and what its purpose is. So what you call it doesn't make any difference? No difference at all. It's all about the purpose of the agreement. And it's also, it's all about what you do following the signing of that agreement. There is no point in having an NDA or a confidentiality agreement if you don't then follow it up with the appropriate behaviours, if you don't treat that information as confidential, if you don't restrict the people that you disclose it to. What do you think the key issues are to be covered in an NDA? First of all, the definitions. That, that really, those are the bedrocks of any NDA or confidentiality agreement. So making sure you clearly define what is the confidential information, who is it going to be disclosed to, what's the purpose of this agreement, how long is it going to run. If you understand those fundamentals, then within that you can then build around it and you can make something that will work for everybody's benefit while still protecting the information. Can you take me through the key differences between the treatment of confidential information in continental Europe and the UK? Well, if we take the UK first of all, um, we have no legislative framework or procedure in the UK that protects confidential information or trade secrets. What we have is the law of contract and we have the law of equity. And what's grown up through the courts is a number of cases which have told us exactly how the courts will treat confidential information and what defines it. So in order for information to be confidential, it has to have necessary quality of confidence about it. What that is will vary from case to case, but the typical examples uh, of circumstances that we see in the UK where we have confidential arrangements are employees and employees, collaboration agreements, non-disclosure agreements, and also where confidentiality is implicit in the way the information has been treated. Europe is similar in the sense that there are very few specific frameworks to deal with confidential information other than for example Sweden. Generally, like ours, they tend to rely on a combination of different laws, whether it be um, unfair competition law, civil codes, employment law. The real issue in Europe though is that disparity between how they then treat the information. For example, in Italy there's no secrecy in proceedings. So if you want to seek a remedy, you want to stop somebody disclosing something, the irony is you actually have to go into court and disclose it in open court in the first place, which is somewhat self-defeating. And then you've got jurisdictions like Austria and Belgium, where actually it's very difficult to use the confidential information in order to find out exactly what the defendant has done. So there's no consistency and as a result of this, the European Commission has actually looked at whether we need a harmonising policy on trade secrets within Europe. There's currently a study going on looking at what economic benefit would be derived from that. If I'm entering into an NDA, do I need to worry about which law applies? It does if you want certainty. 
And that's one of the problems. Because we have this huge variety of approaches within Europe in relation to the procedure and the way confidential information is enforced, at least if you put into your agreement exactly which jurisdiction is governing, then at least you have some certainty. What happens when things go wrong? Well, usually when things go wrong, it's a little bit too late because the information is already out there. So when things go wrong, typically we see it heading to the courts or we see information devalued because now it's out in the public arena. We see collaboration agreements falling apart and the parties unfortunately having to abandon any attempt at a joint venture. Should you have in place measures to ensure that employees understand their confidentiality obligations? Absolutely. It, it's something where employers tend to fall down, to be honest. Some employers do have uh, confidentiality obligations written into their employment contracts, but all too often the employees aren't aware. So they don't have a real understanding of what their confidentiality obligations are to their employee. What their employer should be doing is actually telling them what they are, briefing them on them, and then providing training. What employees really should be doing is having some form of confidentiality policy in place in the first place. Something that ties in with their social media policy, with their general employment contracts, brings the whole thing together and means that there's no confusion between employer and employee as to what the duties are. What should be considered when entering into a collaboration agreement with a third party? The first thing is really to think about what is this collaboration going to achieve? What is its purpose? Once you understand that, then you can start to think about what confidential information do we actually need to disclose? Invariably, people tend to disclose everything up front, all in one go, and they don't need to. Perhaps they can only disclose things on a staged basis. Perhaps it can just be tiered so that they don't have to reveal all of the crown jewels in one go. Because if that collaboration agreement later breaks down, you'll have a far easier time protecting the information if you've restricted how much you need to disclose in the first place. And on the same theme, thinking around, well, who needs to be privy to this confidential information? It doesn't have to be everybody. You can have a quite tight confidentiality club. Again, the tighter that disclosure is, the much easier it's going to be to enforce. And then defining what confidential information is. You know, really thinking about that in the first place. Again, a clear definition is going to help further down the line if you do come up against problems.